Hello, future people. Welcome to Getting Tabled. I'm Jason the Bruce, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Green Spectres from Bot War. Last month, we had a look at the Red Cannoneers. This month, we're looking at the Green Spectres. Our first and foremost, I want to say thank you to David Huxley, who actually thrown my name out there, uh, presumably because he enjoyed my previous video on the subject. Um, honestly, mate, I don't know if this video would have happened if you hadn't have um, actually thrown my name in the hat. Not, not to put words in anybody's mouths, certainly not Anthony's, uh, but... I just don't know if it would have happened otherwise um, because they're not a faction that I own. Um, so it's not something that I would have been doing unless Anthony had have asked me to, um, which because it's just a fact. Uh, but I am looking forward to this because this particular faction sounds like they're going to be playing a lot differently than anybody else. Um, not in relation to Bot War, but other games that I've played. Generally in tabletop gaming, you tend to get a few different types of factions. Some of them, like the Red Cannoneers, are point and click. Uh, like you just point them at what you want to die, and the thing dies, and that's all they're good at. Other ones, you kind of have to play with them a little bit and actually get how the tactics work. From the snippets that I've heard Anthony talking about, and from the teasers that's been going through the Bot War group, I feel that that's how this is going to end up playing because that's the intention of it. And now I don't want that to be sounding like a negative thing. I actually personally tend to really encourage people to look at those sort of factions, keeping in mind that you're not going to walk into a faction like this and be successful with them straight away. Uh, in fact, you're probably going to lose a lot of games before you win them. Unless you're a very lucky person or is someone that just really picks up on factions like this very, very easily. There's going to be a lot of synergy that you have to work out here, in theory. I say in theory because I haven't looked at this document yet. We will be having a look at it today. Uh, but before we look at anything in too much detail, I kind of wanted to preface that first. Like, there are factions in games that are harder to use effectively. That's not a bad thing, but it can feel that way initially. All I'm trying to say to you is if you're the sort of person that wants to be challenged, this is going to be a faction for you. If you're the sort of person that only ever seems to play the same sort of thing, maybe this is your chance to actually look at playing something differently. You might be surprised. Once you figure that puzzle out, you may actually enjoy this more. I personally tend to find that when it comes to these puzzle type factions, that once you figure out that puzzle, it's a lot more rewarding um, because there's just, it feels like you've earned it as opposed to the point and click where it kind of comes down to how your dice are, which is not to downplay those people that play those factions. They are fun too, but there's a little bit more reward that comes from playing what I'm now calling a puzzle faction. So starting off here, we have a very nice looking cover, honestly. Um, gives a nice kind of feel to how the faction is. Uh, everything that Anthony's kind of dis discussed at this point is how these guys are all about stealth and tactics and the kind of using the shadows and so forth. So it kind of comes out in the cover. Uh, I kind of like getting an image of the threats around them as well um, because I haven't seen as much of that stuff in the past like it's not just i'm here and i'm bad ass. there's kind of more to it than that which i like uh, and then we have our obligatory product shots and most of these most of these are images that we've seen already um, these particular images we've seen teased it doesn't make them bad though but quite the opposite quite frankly um very very much the opposite uh, i quite like what we're seeing here Written by Anthony Mallet, which is what you would expect. 
Continuing down, we've got some more product shots that we've already seen, which is fine. Like, again, like that, this is kind of like we're using things to tease what's coming. So you would expect that he's been teasing certain things. Um, I like the fact that like we're getting actual like quotes and stuff from people throughout this as well. I'm not going to go through all of this just as I didn't from the last one, but I do like the fact that the story is continuing and uh, you're getting an expl explanation as to why this is happening in world. Um, we've already kind of touched on why it's happening in the game, but in world is obviously important. Um, there was there was corrupted things that are hiding. Uh, there's been more waves of the Valiants arriving, and Ducal has made the decision to split things up, and some of that advice to do so came from somebody in particular, and there's people within that are worried that the coils are kind of influencing things and... It's just interesting to hear about the actual um, questions that some people have. Uh, this particular character, well, this mini originally came in the original second edition Turbo Box, uh, not Turbo Box, the original second edition starter set. I used to have that. I don't have it anymore. Um, and here we have a broadsode. And if you don't know why I'm saying it that way, then you don't get points and everybody else does. So, Broadsold has a carnival ride for his alternate form, which is interesting and doesn't really tell me anything about it, uh, which is interesting. Um, just talking a little bit about the character. We're just going to briefly go through all of these. Hello Storm, th this is a bot that I really like the look of. I always have. I, I, I actually I do like Broadsold as well, um, but... Hello Storm really stands out to me as one that I like. Uh, we've got Domino, which kind of shares a few design elements with um, Broadsword. He's also a carnival ride. Um, each of them have their own story, which is what we saw in the last one, which is nice. Short Stride, oh, I don't mind that either. Supercharge, seems like he's... Very fast, which makes sense because he's a sports car. Sorry, a supercar. Uh, and we have Wolf here. Brawler. Aegis. RJ. I quite like the new, the, the update on RJ. That That's quite nice. Uh, Shadow. Again, supercar. Haunter. I really love the look of Haunter. Haunter really stands out as something different because this, like the cloaks and so forth, just doesn't really happen in bot stuff very often. No, I'm not talking bot wars here, just generally robots. They don't tend to wear clothing because there's no point. Uh, and then here we have, so we've got circuit board, transistor, resistor, and capacitor. And their alt forms are all data storage, which makes sense because they're the old cassette bots. Uh, Moak is a mini Moak. I have no idea what a mini moke is. Um, I'm assuming that's something that's very obvious to everybody that's listening to this, and I just don't get what it is. I'm guessing it's a vehicle of some kind, but I've never heard of a mini moke. Yeah, I don't, I don't get that at all. You're going to have to explain that one in the comments. I'm sorry, Anthony. Um, Herbs is a mini, and if you don't know why he's called Herbs, then me telling you that it's the wrong sort of vehicle won't make any sense to you. Uh, Anthony, that's not a criticism. I'm, I'm just kind of hinting at things to see if people get, get what it is in the comments. And this is Phantom. He's a van. Oh, I kind of like the fact that some of these guys are just really boring alternate modes. Not everything has to be muscle cars, speaking of muscle cars, um, and sports cars and stuff. Some of them can be really boring stuff, which is I kind of like. It makes sense. Uh, Apparition is a muscle car. Quite like that one as well. And then we have one of the new pieces of artwork, and this one in particular is gorgeous, quite frankly. This this is where, like, th this is one of the big things that Anthony is trying to do is get some really nice artwork because he kind of needs it if he wants to expand this game out. Yeah, he needs more eyes on it. So here we have two of our more recent factions facing off against each other. We've got the Overlords with our Shark guys here and some more of our green specters 
continuing again like a lot of these are ones that we've seen before uh here's my guys down here i mean not literally but th these are the faction that i've mainly been playing and here we are with the green specters faction rules but i want to preface again this is not a faction that you can just point and click with it's not how they work it's not how they're supposed to work this is a faction that you're going to have to put a little bit of time in i'm not going to be able to give you all of the answers in this video and that's not what this video is about you saw at the start of the video that this is a review of the document i'm not giving you a strategy video on how to win with these guys um but hopefully you'll be able to pick up a few tips from this let's get in and let's start having a look for ourselves when using pure green spectres faction and that's the important thing here if you want to get the actual rules you need to use only these guys you can't have allies you can't have cell swords if you take them you don't get the bonuses but if you do all take them you get firstly superior intel at the start of each turn the green spectres player may choose one model and either raise or lower its strategy rating by up to three points. Move the stat card of the chosen model to its new order. This order will last for the remainder of that turn only. At the end of that turn, return the stat card to its normal strategy rating. I really like this, mainly because it's only one. If this was happening to multiple bots, I would have a problem with this. But the fact that it's only one really helps because it's going to mean that if your plan hasn't gone the way that you wanted it and you need to guarantee that your that one particular guy gets to go before everybody else, this is the best chance that you have of doing that. Um, but it's I don't feel this is something that's going to break. This is something that you're going to have to... Because... If you pick the wrong bot, then you're wasting a really good ability. Uh, in the shadows, up to half of any spin, uh, any green specters forced, rounding down, may deploy up to 20 inches forward from their own board edge, regardless of the scenario rule. Any models with the scout special rule must be included in that deploy deployment. So basically, if you have anybody with the scout rule because they already get to do something similar to this they have to be part of that 20 inches you can't move everybody else and then oh wait i've got this scout as well the scout has to be part of that um th this shouldn't be surprising anybody that this this was pretty much one of the very first things we knew that was going to happen in the faction not not that we knew exactly how it was going to work uh but we knew that there was going to be some deployment here Given that this is a 3x3 three three board, so 36 inches, 20 inches is insanely far. That's, that's going to be something that some people are really going to enjoy using. I have some mixed feelings on this. I mean, my initial first thought is 20 inches is more than halfway across the board. But here's the thing that I think a lot of people are going to be forgetting. And the reason why I say you're going to have to put some thought into this. Yes, this gets you closer to your opponent. and means that you can get some nice shots off quickly. But this also gets you closer to your opponent. And that means they can get some shots off quickly as well. Being further forward faster may get you to the objective. But that's not necessarily a good thing if you don't use it properly. You're going to have to be careful with this. Next page is understanding the stat cards. We've kind of looked at this already. Uh, I already gave my feedback on what I thought about this in the previous video, so I'm not going to really go through this here. Um, the only real negative thing I had to say is that I didn't like the fact that we're using symbols instead of giving the description of what the rule is. That's the only thing that I had to say there. All right, and here we get to the actual stat cards. Now, it's probably worth noting here, for those of you that aren't aware already, none of these stat cards are actually going to be any different. The big thing about this particular faction is what we've already looked at. I'm still going to go through them because some of you may not own, own these, so it's worth actually having a look at. Uh, Broadsword. Uh, he will cost you 17. He comes with 3 energy. Strategy rating of 8. Movement 7. Range 3. Close attack 3. Shield 3. Hit points of 8. And he's got ram attack. Short strider's 11. Still comes with... Oh, sorry. He's got a combat sword. 
and he's got host. So he can host up to four models with the symbiote rule. Uh, we already know who those models are. Short stride, 11, two energy. Uh, s strategy rating of six, movement six, range three, close to shields three, and he's got six hit points. He has blast and scout. So this is one of the ones that has to be within the group that goes forward if he's in your list. Wolf, 12, cost, he's got two energy, SR5, movement seven, three ranged, two close, shields of six, and he's got six hit points with ram attack. You're probably going to see most of them have ram attack because it's very much a valiant thing. Uh, he's got disorient and scout. By all my, I'm not reading through the actual rules here because they are fairly well known at this point. But if you want to pause the video and read through this text here, it will tell you what it is. Uh, Brawler is 13. He's got energy 3. SR6, movement 7. He's got 3 ranged, 3 close, 3 shields and 6 hit points. Again, ram attack, martial warrior and pugilist. Uh, Phantom is 12. He's got 2 energy. SR6, movement 7, range 3, close to shields 3. Six hit points. He's got ground air missile, which you're going to hate if you have flying bots, because it just is horrible. Uh, and invisibility. Uh, Domino ten shield. Uh, energy, sorry, energy of two. Uh, he has SR six movement seven range three CI two shields three and seven hit points. And he's got a stealth mode. He also has hosts and can carry up to four. So he's kind of a discount Broward's out, sort of. I mean, he is and he's at, he is and he isn't. I don't think you would ever really take both, personally. It depends on how you want to build your list out. Uh, and now we come to our symbiotes. So we've got Resistor, which is probably one of my favorites, actually. Uh, again, has the same ability. Two energy, cost you five. SR3, movement 6, 2 ranged, 1 close combat, 2 shields, 4 hit points. He's obscure and a symbiote. Uh, circuit board, 5, 2. So this looks like that's the same for these first two. Uh, his stats are different though. So he's got SR5, movement 6, and then everything else is the same. But he has efficient and symbiote. Then we come to capacitor. My first opinion of Capacitor when I first looked at this card was, why on earth does he cost 10 points? Because it just doesn't seem to make any sense at first glance. I mean, sure, he's got four energy, but everything else is fairly the same. He's got insignificant and obscure, but so does the next guy, and he's not anywhere near close to that. Uh, and Symbiote, so everything else is kind of the same. But then you have to realize that this game works with energy energy is the most important thing in the game this guy costs 10 points because he's boosting your entire list with energy that you should you can share around which is what i didn't see until i was looking at this a little bit longer um sr7 movement six range two close to uh, sorry close one shields one and he's got three hit points and he's got the same stealth again Transistor is a bargain in comparison. He's got three, but with two energy. Uh, like he's he is the bargain of this of these four. SR three two, which means he's also going really quickly. Movement six, range two, close one, two shields and four hit points. This guy is an absolute bargain. Everything else is exactly the same as his friend here. Um, Aegis, cost you six, two energy. SR six, movement seven. Ranged two, close one, shields two, hit points of six. He's got ram attack and obscure. Uh, supercharge cost you 11. He's got three energy. SR4, movement seven, range two, CR3, shields, so close attack three, shields three, six hit points. This guy has air assist uh, and teleport, which is quite nasty. Uh, and then we have Apparition. Apparition costs you eight. He's got two SR9. Movement seven, ranged of three, close to three shield, 
Five hit points and again, invisibility. Um, herbs, cost you seven. Got two energy. SR4, movement seven. He's got two ranged, one close, two shields and four hit points. He's got efficient and obscure. Hellastorm, artwork wise, my my one of the set, honestly. Uh, 15, cost you, th he's got three hit Energy. He has the choice of either Ram Attack or Air Assist. Um, you're probably going to use Ram Attack nine times out of ten unless you have a reason to use the other. Um, but it's going to depend on what's happening. You have the option of both, which is quite nice. Uh, SR5, movement eight, two ranged, three close attack, three shield, six hit points. He's got a combat scimitar, which is always nice, and he's martial warrior. Uh, Moke. Cost you eight, one energy. So this is definitely somebody that would be helped by sharing some energy with him. SR4, movement seven, range two, close attack two, two shields, four hit points, ram attack. He's got efficient and obscure. We have shadow, cost you nine. He's got two energy. SR3, movement seven, ranged attack two, close attack three, shields three, hit points of six, ram attack. Close sim uh, combat scimitar and sabotage. Uh, RJ cost you four. So again, this is another bargain. Two energy. SR4, movement seven, two ranged, one close attack. Uh, two shields, four hit points, secure and sniper. Uh, and then Haunter is 13. Cost you, uh, he's got two energy. SR8, movement seven, no ranged. It's all in close attack. You got four close attack. That's quite nice, honestly. That's the that's really nice. Uh, three shield, six hit points, and ram attack. A combat scimitar. And then we're going into our bonuses, which I will come back to in a moment. So you've got a nice spread here of SR again. You're going to be able to build out the list that you want, keeping in mind that if you purely take from this list, you have the ability that one person every round is going to be able to lower or raise their SR by three. So in the case of Broadsword here, yes, I'm saying it properly, uh, you could lower that down as much as five. Uh, hypothetically, if you really wanted to take somebody out, SR4 could become SR1, and you could snipe somebody in the first, in, in the first earliest part of the turn uh, and really ruin their day. Um, that's just potentially really nasty there, especially for four points. Um, so we start with behind enemy lines, which cost you one. This is an upgrade, uh, which gives this model the sabotage special rule. So sabotage, if an enemy model has not yet activated and is damaged by a model with this rule, then it can only move at half speed, rounding up for its activation that turn. This needs to be thrown on RJ. Seriously, take her down to, well, at least for first turn. Take her down to one, snipe anybody that hasn't activated, and watch your opponent cry for the rest of the turn. Um, you, you could really ruin a first turn with that. Uh, it's not the only place that you could use it, but that, that's just the first thing that pops out to me. Um, probably partially because it's the last one I looked at, but with that sniper, it would be very helpful. Into the shadows for three. All models with the obscure special rule receive a crit dice instead of a shield dice for obscure. Uh, this upgrade is not taken by a specific character and cannot be removed once taken. It's a fashion-wide fashion -wide upgrade. This is very, very rare. Uh, it does, however, it, it can be negated by other specific upgrades such as Deceiver's Evil Entity. So faction-wide upgrades are very rare. That definitely would be one worth considering. Silent Rage for one. For any critical dice rolls of a three in a close combat attack, immediately roll another attack dice and add the result to the attacks. So you're getting exploding dice basically with this, which is something that some people are going to love and some people are going to hate because it's the way that exploding dice goes. Uh, I like exploding dice. I just know that not everybody does. Um, release the hounds for three. So for, for three points, Mr. Burns will join your squad. Uh, upgrade, all models in the force with the symbiote special rule 
must swap their ranged attack and close attack for the entire game. So let's go back. Basically, it just means that you'll be getting a better... Sorry, you're getting a better close attack with everybody instead of a ranged attack with everybody, which given that that's how this game is supposed to work, it would make sense. Uh, energy net for two. Um, this is an upgrade. Energy net is a special activation costing one energy point. It may be used against any single model on a 50 mil base or smaller. Pick a target within eight inches and roll a D10. If you roll under the target strategy rating, they are ensnared in the net. A roll of a 1 or a 10 is always a failure to, a, to ensnare. The target model may not make a move action until it can free itself. Target may break out of the net by spending an activation and an energy. Ooh. Ooh, there's a bit of a trap there. Um, definitely don't target anybody on this that has a SR1 or 2 because you can't roll any of those successfully. You can't roll under two without hitting one, which automatically fails. So if you're going to use this, you can only use this on an SR of three or above because it's the only way this can work. Uh, with In saying that, though, um, I think this is a must-take if you've got room in your list for it. Um, definitely. Uh, this is too good not to be in the list. It's way too effective. Your opponent's probably going to hate you for it, though. And then finally, we have the Code Spear, which is five. This is an upgrade. A model with the Code Spear may make a special ranged attack for the following profile. It's a range of one inch. Range attack is five. Oh, that's quite nice. Boosting power is not permitted when using the, the Code Spear. That makes sense. Model must clearly show that it has the Code Spear to use this upgrade. Um... Okay, so you have to modify your mini so that it's holding the right thing, basically. Um, unless you're in a friendly game, in which case your friend probably won't mind, but that's up between you and your friends. Uh, don't tell Anthony that I said that. <laughs> um, honestly, I kind of like what I'm looking at here. Um, there is some depth here. Like I said earlier, this is a faction that you're going to need to spend time on. I don't think this is one that people are going to find extremely difficult to play it's certainly not as easy as some others like, like i said the red cannoneers are point and click um to a point where like that that is all that they do it's point and click um whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is completely up to you uh, but these guys you are going to have to put a little bit more time in you are going to want to kind of test to see who works in your list for example um like the the main thing i pointed out was that combo with RJ? I think that's potentially really nasty, especially turn one. I mean, maybe not necessarily for the later turns, but if you can get her out going first on turn one and then sniper somebody, causing them only be able to move half distance, especially if it's to someone that's really not wanting that to happen, you could really slow down somebody's plans. Uh, you could very easily... Do, throw that into somebody with a really good close combat and stuff as well so depends on how it's going to work and there we have it that's my roundup for the green specters uh honestly this is another good book this is definitely another one that's worth having a look at especially if you own the models already it's important to remember with this one nobody's stats have actually changed it is just a faction upgrade it's a new flavor to some existing models it's a new way to play them it doesn't mean that you have to play them that way but it's a new way to enjoy them uh, if you're a Valiant player, this is just adding more value to the minis that you already have. So that's what this is for. Nice work, Anthony. Good to see.